Alright, in this video, I'm going to solve this task concurrency problem using JavaScript. So this is basically a pretty popular question that's been asked during many interviews. And I would say it's in the medium to hard range. And it really tests your skill on promises, which is a very important topic when it comes to interviews or in your day to day daily tasks while working on a JavaScript project. So here's the problem statement where it says picture having multiple asynchronous tasks that need to be run, but with a limit on how many can be executed at the same time. Now, once that limit is reached, any remaining tasks should wait in a queue and only start running after the active tasks have completed. So, so I think that was pretty clear. So basically in this over here, you can see we have a bunch of promises. Uh, so this is a promises array, which has six functions returning a promise. And all of them resolve the promise and here we are creating a class named task runner and then we are actually iterating through this promises array and running each of this promise concurrently by using this runner.push which is a method within the task runner class all right so our job here is to create this task runner class which will make sure that it's able to run all these promises in a concurrent manner so basically what happens here is this number that you see here that's the concurrency limit so we are going to keep a concurrency limit so what that means is if i've put three over here then it means the first three tasks need to run concurrently or which means continuously or which means at the same time and only after that the next tasks need to be pushed into a queue for further execution so, so basically, once the concurrency limit is reached, which is three in this case, then only after that, the remaining tasks, they need to be pushed into a queue and they need to be executed accordingly only after the current task has finished. So for example, I'll refresh this and show you. So what's going to happen here is these three functions are going to run first or they are going to go into execution. Of course, they have different timers, but that's a whole different thing. Basically, when I refresh this, these three functions are going to execute together and doesn't matter when we get its console log. They're, they're just going to go into its execution phase together. And as soon as any one of these functions has completed executing, which means its resolve statement has been completed, then that means one of the tasks has completed. So while these two tasks are still executing, because one of the tasks has been executed, the first task waiting in the queue, which would be this, should get executed next so basically the number that we define here all those based on that the first n number of tasks need to be executed and as soon as any one task from here completes its execution the next task from the queue is going to be popped and it's going to be executed as well all right so that's what we need to do over here we need to run tasks concurrently so basically we have multiple asynchronous tasks that need to be run but with a limit on how many can be executed at the same time in this case three three tasks can be executed at the same time and once that limit is reached the next tasks should be in a queue and as soon as any task completes its execution, the next task from the queue should come and execute itself. But at a given moment, at a given time, three tasks should be executing at the same time or concurrently. All right, so let's go and execute this. Basically, let's create this task runner class. So first of all, right over here, I'll go right on top and here I'll create a class named task runner. So task runner. This will be a class and within this task runner class, I'll create a constructor which will take nothing but the concurrency. Sorry, wrong spelling constructor. All right, then this will have nothing but a queue, of course, because we need the queue to hold the tasks which will be waiting to be executed. Right. Then after that, we are going to define our concurrency variable. So this dot concurrency equals concurrency. You should know how classes work. This is how we define the variables in a class. So the concurrency variable is going to be equal to what, whatever we pass over here or basically over here, we pass three. So concurrency limit is going to be three. Then after that, I'm going to write this dot active count equals zero. So what is this active count? Basically, this just keeps track of the number of currently active tasks. All right, because based on the number of currently active tasks we can decide if it's less than the concurrency number which is let's say if it's less than three then we can push a new task to the queue all right so here are our three variables and then after this all i'll do is i'll create a method named push and this will receive a promise so basically if i go down here you can see we iterate through each of these promise in this promises array and then we call the push method where we pass in each of these promise or each of these functions right which returns a promise so since we are using runner.push over here for each of these functions so we create this push method in our class 
and this is going to make sure that it adds a new task to the runner or basically it's going to make sure that we either push a new task to the queue or we execute it all right so what i'll do first is think about it the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the number of active tasks is less than the concurrency limit so for example right when i'm starting none of the tasks are executing or active count is zero so we need to make sure that for these first three promises for these first three functions we start incrementing the active count one by one until they're less than the concurrency limit which is three so these three can execute so until the active count which is zero right now is less than three we should be executing the promise and once the active count has reached three then after that we need to push the remaining tasks to the queue all right so that's pretty simple all i'll do over here is if this dot active count is less than this dot concurrency it's pretty simple just think about it logically so if active count is less than concurrency then of course we are going to execute it because the concurrency limit hasn't reached that means we can execute the promise so this dot execute nothing but the promise we just received which is this or this and so on so this execute function we need to write this execute method don't worry we'll write it soon just know that there will be an execute method which will execute that particular promise all right then else if the concurrency limit has reached then we need to push all of these to the queue and then as soon as any of these tasks complete we need to pop one by one from the queue we need, we need to pop these promises one by one from the queue and execute them as well all right so else this dot queue dot push and we're going to push the promise all right so that's that and that is all we need to do for the push method then after this what i'll do is i just need to create the execute method so i will write async execute this will execute the individual promise and there's going to be a method so execute receives those promises those individual promise so here it's pretty self-explanatory the first thing we need to do is of course we need to increase the active count because we start executing each of these promise right until it's until the active count is less than concurrency so let's say the moment we start running this running the, running this file this first one is going to go here this first one is going to call the push over here the push is going to check if the active count is less than concurrency it is because it's zero at the moment zero is less than three so it's going to execute so before we execute we obviously need to increment the active count because it just means that one promise is actually executing right now so this dot active count plus plus and after this we need to execute that promise so i'll create a try and in this try all i'll do is i will await the completion of this promise basically that task so i will write await and i will invoke the promise because this is nothing but a callback function if i call this it's going to return this part and if i put await on this then it actually executes this promise all right so this is going to execute it and then i need to make sure that anytime any of these promises finish their execution i need to make sure that i decrement the active count and then i push the first element from the queue and then i execute the first element from the queue so basically to do that as soon as any of these promises complete executing any of them basically any promise anytime completes executing i need to make sure that i decrement the active count and I execute the first promise from the queue because obviously the active count becomes less than the concurrency right after any one promise has finished executing so the active count becomes less than the concurrency that means we need to take the task waiting in the queue and then execute it so all I'll do is I'll write finally because finally runs after this part has completed so after any of the promise has been executed I will first decrement the active task once the task is complete so this dot active count minus minus this should be this dot then after this i'll simply check if there are any tasks in the queue remove the first task and execute it because in a queue the first task is the one that we execute first right because that's been waiting for the longest time so if there are any tasks in the queue let's remove the first task and execute it so first i'll check if there is anything present in the queue if there is then simply call the execute method that we just created call the execute method and i want to execute the first task in the queue so this dot queue dot shift all right and that's and this will create the same loop basically it will call the execute and the active count will again become three and it will execute its task and wait for it 
And as soon as any of the promise again, finish executing, it's going to go to the finally, it's going to decrement the active count, and then it's going to execute the next item present in the queue and so on until all of them finish executing based on their set timers then basically the active count is gradually going to keep decrementing decrementing and finally and finally reach zero to the point where the queue is also finally empty and all the tasks would have been executed all right so yes i think this should be all that we require to just test this out if our code works or not what i'll do is i will open my console and i will refresh this let's see what happens promise one resolved two three then after that four five and six so this worked exactly as in the demo and to show you this more properly what i can do is let's say i will set all these three timers to the same so the first three tasks let me set their timers to the same value so one second each and if i refresh this then you'll see three of them got executed together and after that the remaining tasks in the queue get executed one by one so four then five then six all right so we execute these three concurrently then the remaining tasks from the queue execute one by one and whichever one's timer is going to be the lowest executes first all right so our job is to basically execute the next task from the queue and doesn't matter how long it takes to complete its execution but as long as any other task completes we need to make sure we decrement the active count and keep executing the next task from the queue and depending on the timer set for each of those individual promise they will resolve based on whoever's timer is lesser than the other one so say if this was the second one here was 2000 but this over here was zero then let's see what would have happened um one three four get executed first then two gets executed and then five and then six so here basically you might think why weren't these three executed first and then maybe the zeroth one was executed well no these three went into execution together at the same time but let's say between these three these two have one second so let's say this got executed so as soon as this got executed the active count became the active count decremented which means the next task from the queue got pushed so this started its execution and because this is still executing and this takes two seconds but this is also executing and this has zero seconds literally so this got resolved first and it resolved promise for resolve first so after that we were able to see this one print its log statement so this did start its execution first but because one of these two finished its execution so the next one from the queue got popped which is this so this started its execution and this executed before this event could finish its execution even though this started executing first so that's why this got printed first all right so that's how this works so this is a pretty cool question it, it tests your knowledge and promises and it has a lot of advantages in real life scenarios as well so when it comes to real life scenarios it comes handy in situations such as if you had to upload let's say a large video or, or create an online booking ticket system and so on so anything that happens in bulk but you only need to process a part of it that's where something like task concurrency can come in handy all right so this was all about the video if you found it insightful drop a like and subscribe for more